Hello and welcome to the channel everybody. Today in this video I'm going to be talking about the Fnatic CSL Elite. This is the PS4 version, uh, this is the official F1 wheel and the CSL Elite load cell pedals. Now this particular kit I got in the Fnatic F1 combo. So it came with this wheel, the PS4 version of the CSL Elite and the standard CSL pedals, or CSL Elite pedals. So it had the two pedals with no load cell and the brake pedal just had like this spongy thing to make a bit of resistance there. And when I changed to that from my Logitech G27, I found the pedal was a bit, I don't know, I couldn't get used to it. The brake, brakes I could never get right. So I ordered the CSL Elite load cell pedals. The load cell brake pedal feels much better. Uh, you can adjust it with different uh, little load cell things behind it to suit the way you drive. I'm reasonably happy with it now. In saying that, I still can't bike well, but that's just me. While we're on the subject of pedals, I might also say that the accelerator pedal, it comes with different, uh, you got like this sandpapery type one you can put on there, which is really grippy. You've got the rubber pedals you can put on, uh, are grippy enough in my opinion. And then you can just not put on anything and then it's a lot more slidey. So on mine, I decided with the accelerator, it's just bare, so my foot can slide on the accelerator well. And then on the brake and the clutch, I got the rubber to help not slip off them, uh, especially under heavy braking. Uh, the wheel also comes with all these little different keycaps, like your pit limiter, headlights, all that to help put on here so you know what buttons are what. Obviously you can just keep with blanks if that's what you want. Uh, I quite like all the labels on there. These come with like the little toggle things as well, um, which can act as buttons as well. So it gives you a few extra buttons. I personally use this to like brake bias forward, brake bias back, engine mode forward, engine mode back. So, so that can come in quite beneficial during the race. Another good thing you can do with this um, is with the display and all that here, change all your force feedback and all your wheel settings pretty much as you're racing. So you can be in the middle of the race and you can start changing stuff, um, which is really cool. The thing I like about this is the road feels really good with this, the feedback is really good with this, and it has helped me become more of a consistent driver I'm not going to say it's made me faster, although it might have made me faster a little bit, because the f thing about sim racing is you don't have the G-forces like in real life, which means you have to go off one, sound, and two, the feedback you're feeling through the wheel. And if that feedback is a whole bunch of knocks, it's difficult. Whereas this, with a belt-driven setup, which... It's a little bit more fluent. Um, I, you can feel as you understeer a little bit more. With the G27, I couldn't feel when I was understeering. Obviously, you can see it. You're just going forward instead of turning. But this, like, you feel it in the steering wheel. You can feel it go heavy, heavy, light. Um, so it helps you find that edge of grip a little bit more than what you do with a G27 or G29 or anything uh, gear operated in my opinion. Now in Australia this setup uh, retails for about $1,220 including the load cell pedal uh, and that's as of 
the 12th of April 2020. Uh, that can obviously change in the future and by the time you're watching this. Uh, in the US, I believe it's about 820, I think, from memory. No, 840. I've now had this for about a year now. Um, I haven't had any problems with this other than your normal suede steering wheel problems, which you even have in real cars. If you have a suede steering wheel in a race car or in a real car, uh, the suede does tend to wear it can get a bit glossy and warm, especially if you're not wearing gloves uh, like what I do. But you don't have to buy this wheel. Uh, you can get a different wheel with like leather or something on it or just rubber. But I find a lot of people tend to wear gloves. These are actually Puma go-kart gloves uh, with the sort of grippy things on the inside. But I've found the difference between going from a G27 to the Fanatic CSL Elite has been quite big. The Logitech G27, because it's gear internal, I found when you're even driving in a straight line, like on F1 2019 or whatever, really, it can be just knock, 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 knock. And you're trying to feel the car, feel the road, everything, with how many knocks and how fast are those knocks going? <laughs> how loud are those knocks? The gear operated steering wheels are very loud. And that's something I could not have, I'm afraid, uh, because my bedroom is right on the other side of this wall. And my girlfriend, which is like always asleep, uh, she's, she's like a bear she's she hibernates or something i don't know i'm kidding i'm kidding so anyway i i couldn't race with the logitech g27 while she was sleeping uh which was really annoying so i bought this um something that's belt driven something that was reasonably good value for money in my opinion a little bit better than belt a little bit better value for money, in my opinion, than a Thrustmaster T300. But if you already have like a Thrustmaster T300, then I'd, I'd probably say wait out, save a little bit more money and go for either a Club Sport 2.5 or a direct drive, if you're willing to spend that kind of money. However, the benefit of the CSL Elite over even the Club Sport, um, particularly if you're new to sim racing and you don't have a cockpit like this and you want to kind of go between, let's say, iRacing on here and the PS4 um, to play Gran Turismo, whatever. Uh, with the CSL Elite, you can use it in, uh, at least if you get the PlayStation version, uh, you can use it on the PC and on the PlayStation as well. And the CSL Elite comes with, in the pack, a uh, table mount as well. Whereas if you spend the extra however much money and go for the Club Sport 2.5, then you also have to fork out another certain amount of money. I think it's about, how much is it in Australian money? Okay, the Club Sport. So in Australian money, it's an extra $100 to get a table mount. So in US dollars, that's probably about $50, maybe. Obviously, if you didn't want to use the nice clicky paddles, and I really like the nice clicky paddles on this wheel, um, you can get the Club Sport Shifter 1.5 for about 350 Australian dollars. And the handbag for $200, etc. The really good thing about Fnatic, in my opinion, is the fact you can upgrade. So I've got all this stuff now and let's say I want to change my wheel. I can literally just go, oh, I want uh, this nice Porsche wheel here and then just order that. Pull this off with its nice 
quick release here and then put that on put the new one on um, I'm not sure I should have done that with this turned on my bad or if I feel like I just I want to upgrade to a direct drive then I can pull this off and just replace the base and whack this on which is something you can't do with a, a Logitech my suggestion as soon as you get one of these um, if you decide to get one of these is to uh, update the firmware to the latest firmware firmware can change everything um, if you can spend a little bit extra money and go for the Club Sport 2.5 and you don't need the PS4 and you don't need the table mount go to the Club Sport 2.5 uh, which will give you a little bit more force in the steering wheel and from what I hear the people that do have them or have tried these back to back uh, you can feel a little bit more detail compared to this so if you can go to the 2.5 go to the 2.5 I've had this for about a year I haven't had any failures or anything like that uh, the build quality seems okay despite this being plastic and the Club Sport 2.5 is like aluminium and stuff like that um, I do think the the build quality on the Club Sport 2.5 on its internals as well that you can't see is a little bit better from searching Facebook posts and stuff like that from people that have owned these I have heard of a few people having failures with the CSL Elite but not so much with the Club Sport 2.5 in saying that I haven't had a problem with this so take that as you will but if I do have any problems with it I'll let you know um, I'll add it in the description below or comment or something for the moment hasn't been a problem but anyway thanks for watching this video everybody hit that like button if you liked it subscribe for more videos and I will see you in the next video